Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're good. Today, we're gonna be reacting to a five star predictions video, which I made February of last year. Oh my God. I, I, <laughs> I don't know why it's taken me over a year to read like the 10 or something books I was most excited for. But it has. Let's just get into it. I'm gonna watch the video back. I can't remember what books are on here. Before we get into it, I actually need to ask a favor of you. <laughs> um, I am currently making my final year uni project, which is equivalent to my dissertation, but I'm actually making a documentary because I do a journalism degree. And I'm making mine about the pay disparities in publishing for authors of color, particularly for black female authors. And so I just really want to represent like the reader's point of view an opinion on the topic in the documentary so if you could just send me a video of yourself answering some questions that's all I need from you please help me out so basically the questions are what's your favorite book by an author of color why do you think it's important we read diversely and what changes do you think need to happen to the book industry to make it more diverse you can just like film this on your phone and then email it to me at meguni.doc at gmail.com. It can either be like on YouTube as unlisted and just send me the link or you can just send me the file. You don't need to edit the video at all. Like literally just film yourself and then send me the video. I would appreciate it so, 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 so much. So much. Cause it's hard to make a documentary and like we've only just got out of lockdown in the UK. So I would really appreciate it. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on the topic. So it'd be great if you could send me that. It literally needs to be two minutes. Just film it on your phone. You don't need to stress about it, but I really help. It would really help me if you guys could send me some of them. Let's just get into the video. I don't know how well I'm gonna have predicted this. I can't remember what was on there. I feel like I may have done a pretty good job. Today <laughs> we are doing a very exciting video, and that is my five star prediction. So these are all books that I am hoping to read this year, and that I think <laughs> I'm gonna give five stars. I have pretty good feelings about all of them. So the first book on my list is The Night Circus by Erin Morganson. For those of you who don't know, I read The Starless Sea at the end of 2019, <laughs> and I loved it. It was my second favorite book of the year. I feel like this is my kind of book. I like books that are a bit confusing, that are a bit all over the place that are a bit uh, misleading. And I think that's kind of what this is. Also this edition is five stars on its own. So if you were to ask me, Megan, what is it about? <laughs> I know it's set in a circus. So I did give The Night Circus five stars. Erin Morganston can do no wrong. She can do no wrong. Maybe she snapped. I loved it. I really, really loved The Night Circus. I loved how confusing and strange and ethereal and magical it was. Um, I still cannot really tell you what it's about. Not sure I can't tell you what it's about. I can't, I can't tell you what it's about. <laughs> it's basically about two magicians who are locked in this like lifelong battle with one another through the circus. The circle's kind of like the vessel for that. Um, but they don't know that they are battling with one another. And it's kind of their love story, but it's also the story of this magical circus and of all these other characters and it's weird. And I really want to reread it. I think I read it this time last year, maybe maybe about a year ago. And I need to read both that and the Sala Sea again because they're both such magical, like I can't even describe Erin Morganson's writing to you sufficiently, but just so special and unique. But I am terrified of rereading them. Not because I don't think I'm gonna love them, but just because it's like, it's an experience. I have to be in the right headspace to reread them. And I understand why people say it's boring because it's slow. The plot is a bit all over the place, but like it's got this flair for the dramatic, which I just love. So we've got one. <laughs> My next five star prediction is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. So obviously okay. Taylor Jenkins Reid is super well known for The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, which I think I gave a four star initially and then bumped it up to a five star because I just couldn't stop thinking about it. I've been scared off of this one for a little while just because of the unique way in which it's written. Mm. If you don't know, it's written in kind of an interview format where you just have the character's name and then what they say and that's them telling the story. Okay, so... Daisy Jones and the Six, I gave, I think, a 4.5. So it's like not quite a five, but it's very close. Like it's super close. And very similar to Evelyn Hugo, like I kind of see it as a five star read, but like it wasn't five stars, but it was. 
I don't know. I really, really, really loved the way that this was told, the unique style in which it was told in that interview format. I thought it was so interesting and I would love to read more books in that way. I just really loved hearing everything through the characters' voices. The characters all had really unique voices and really identifiable voices. It made me cry. I remember I was driving back to uni or driving home from uni, one of the two. I think I was driving back to uni and I was just sobbing silently on the motorway reading this book. Like my dad was driving, he didn't even know I'd been crying, but I was like sobbing for like half an hour reading this book. Like it really hit me. I was looking at people in the cars and they were like, what the fuck? Me when people looked at me crying on the motorway. I'm ashamed. Oh. Because of course Katy Perry's so strong. But yeah, I really loved the like music setting. I thought that was really fun. I thought the time setting was really fun. I thought the ending was great. It ends in a way that I didn't really expect. So it wasn't a five star, but like I kind of view it as one of those books. So maybe it was a five star. I, that's like a maybe. That's like, it was up there. It was basically as up there as you could be without me giving it five stars. Next on my predictions list is Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. Ah. Now, <laughs> I haven't finished the Shadow and Bone trilogy yet. Oh I've God. only read the first book. I only have the first book. Six of Crows, I just have a massive, like, I just know I'm going to love it. The culprit of this video being so late. I just read this in a reading blog and I gave this 4.5 stars and I gave Crooked Kingdom like 4.75, but re I gave it a five on Goodreads. Like I rounded up to a five on Goodreads. Now, this is a great series. Like, this is such a good series. The, char the characters are the best part of this. The characters are some of the, like, the most well-rounded characters. The, some of the most interesting characters. Inej. I, I can't stop thinking about Inej. Like, I just love her. Like, has there ever been a character as iconic as Inej? The answer is no. She's a blessing and a curse. She's wild. She's free. She's dynamic. The only reason this one wasn't a five star was because the pacing at the end, the, like the last third didn't quite pull it off for me. And that's particularly where the heist section is, like where it comes to a head. And I didn't feel like it was quite done as well as I wanted it to. Whereas I really feel like in this one, it pulled off what I wanted where you were kept in the dark of the plans of the heist and of what to expect and like what was going on. So the characters were five steps ahead of you and you didn't really know what was happening and you thought you knew what was happening and then something would happen. You'd be like, shit, the plan's not going to plan, but it turned out that is the plan, you know, or something like that or the other way around. You know what I mean? You know, that you were constantly being confused by what was happening. Whereas in this one, I kind of felt like, you know, you knew what was supposed to go down and kind of what was going to happen. And that was the only thing that let it down for me. So again, Similar to Daisy Jones, like this was this was super close to being a five star. It was a 4.5. So we haven't had anything yet that's like a dud in this five star predictions. This was definitely up there. Lee Bardugo's writing is incredible. I'm still waiting for Ninth House 2. I don't know how long I'm gonna be waiting. <laughs> I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm not happy at how long Ninth House is being delayed. Like I have never wanted to read a book so much. I don't think I've ever been waiting for a book. So the way that Ninth House ends, if you know, if you've read it, you know. You know exactly what I'm talking about. I need it right now. And I swear she once said she wanted it to be like a seven book series. I'm like, Miss Girl, please, let's hurry them up. Like I need, anyway. Um, so this was very close and I basically gave Crooked Kingdom five stars. Like I basically gave it five stars. So I don't think this was that far off. Again, similar to Daisy Jones, it was, it was pretty much correct. My next prediction is... <laughs> Middle Game by Sean and Maguire. Oh my now, god. Now, I've heard so many people say good things about mm -hmm. it. This is a bit complicated, I think. We've got another one, girls and gals and ladies and gents and everyone. Hey. <laughs> Success. It's another five stars. It's another five stars. It's another five stars. It's another five stars. I love Middle Game. Sean and Maguire, without a doubt, another one of my favorite authors. The woman is a pure genius. Like when you read the, oh my God, let me get it. Another one of five stars, Sean McGuire, come tumbling down. Like just the genius, the genius in the way with children's series and the genius in middle game. Oh my God, I don't even have the words. So middle game is very confusing. Middle game is like, what the fuck did I just read? Like what did I just read? Like, not sure what happened, but I liked it. It's about twins called Roger and Dodger. And they were just such interesting characters. They'd basically been bred by this alchemist to like 
take over the world. It's a long story. One of them's good at English, one of them's good at maths, or like one of them's good at languages, I guess, kind of. And it's just such clever writing, such like encapsulating writing, such interesting writing. I miss reading books like these, like books like The Night Circus, Middle Game. Like I read all these like last summer around each other and I just haven't, and I just haven't been reading anything like this lately. I need another Sean Maguire Middle Game book. I need another, I mean, I was about to say I need another Erin Morganson book, but we're about, we're gonna be waiting for like another 10 years for that. She only puts a book out every 10 years. Middle Game was so clever. I think one of the most clever books I ever read and understood enough to give it five stars and just to be in love with it. It was such an amazing book. Wow. If you like complexity in your fantasy, like a bit of sci-fi, time, the way it examines time was really interesting. Oh my God, do I need to reread that as well? Oh my God. Anyway, yeah, five stars, another one. We're doing really well so far. So my next prediction is a bit of a curveball, and that is Bad Feminist by Roxanne Gay. So this is a series of essays by Roxanne Gay, kind of detailing the complex nature, I think, of trying to be a feminist in the modern day. I think that's right. Okay, so another five stars! This is my favourite non-fiction of last year. Oh my god, my mind. How do I know this? I am so powerful. My mind, oh, it amazes me sometimes. This is my favourite non-fiction of last year. Five stars. It, it kind of is about what I said it was about, but it's definitely about, like, race and politics and just like critiquing of the media. The media is a big part of this book and critiquing how that works and perpetuates certain cycles of inequality and oppression. And I am obsessed with Roxanne Gay's writing. Like it was the most interesting nonfiction I've ever read. It was so insightful. I rarely highlight stuff. I was out here with my highlighter, like studying what she was saying. She's an amazing writer. Like the way that um, she just articulates thoughts, it's super interesting. I just thought it was amazing. Yeah, really interesting sections on like the help. There's a whole essay on like the damaging effects of the help, the book and the film. And that was really interesting. Uh, that's one that sticks in my mind, but there's so many. And I think when you wanna examine issues like black feminism, race, feminism as a whole, like these issues, although it's interesting to read maybe like more fact-based books, non-fiction books, I think it's equally as, uh, important to read like experiences from the people who live those intersections so I just loved it I just absolutely loved it I have Not That Bad by Roxane Gay I eventually want to make my way through all of her backlist but I would I loved this and I think it's such an accessible form of non-fiction and it's like if you're not into non-fiction and you maybe wanted to read one this would this would be like what I would recommend to you is If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio. So this was gifted to me by Riley. I'm so Reed, sorry, Riley. And it was a book that she loved last year, so I feel pretty good about that, because again, a lot of the books I've picked up on her recommendation, I've really enjoyed. And everyone compares this to The Secret History. Everyone compares this to The Secret History, but they're wrong. No, 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 no. Okay, we have our first, <laughs> we have our first dad. Oh. Why not? I don't wanna get upset. Don't get no, upset. Don't worry. I gave this two stars. Was not a fan. Such a disappointment. Such a disappointment. Such a disappointment. I am so sad. <laughs> so this is about these actors, these acting students who study Shakespeare predominantly and one of them is murdered. And I still don't even remember. Um, the, one of them has gone to jail, has served jail time for this murder, but we're learning now what the true story is, basically. And here's the thing. I don't mind dislikable characters, like unlikable characters. I don't mind that. I like shitty characters, right? I don't believe that like, you have to have all nice characters and like characters we love and no characters who like are wrong and bad or whatever. But these characters are shitty and they're boring and they're annoying and they're stupid. <laughs> Here's the tea. Like, if you're gonna be shitty, be interesting. Be interesting with that. They were like, they wanted to be shitty as well, but they weren't quite there, like, from recollection. So they, like, they wanted to be bad, but they, like, they were, like, pretending. Do you know what I mean? They're, like, rich kids, like, oh my god, we're so naughty and we're so horrible. <laughs> it was just boring. It was just so boring. I can't even remember my critiques of this. I'll link my vlog where I read this. I did a Dark Academia reading vlog. I'll link 
that. So you can actually see what my problems with it were because I can't remember. Sometimes when I'm super disappointed about a book, I will wipe it from my memory. Like not books I hated that I wasn't expecting much. Like I remember that experience. I know what to talk about. But when it's a book is disappointing, I can't live with that. And so I just kind of like wipe it from my memory. So I can't even remember what my annoyances were. I remember there was many problems I had with it. Um, but I generally can't remember what they were. I generally, I can't remember. Let's just swiftly move on because we don't need to talk about how sad it was because I was so excited for this book. And then, Chris Pad. Anyway. And then the last book that I own that I've chosen okay. is a bit of a curveball. Ooh. It is The Last by Hannah Jameson. Okay. Uh, now this is not a book that really anyone on booktube I've heard talk about. This is a book my mum bought and I've had it all sitting on my TBR shelf and I really want to read it. So I'll just read you out the back. It says... The world has ended in nuclear war. You and 19 other survivors hole up in an isolated Swiss hotel. You wait, you survive. Then you find the body. One of your number has blood on their hands. The race is on to find the killer before the killer finds you. Okay, so that's the premise of the last. I didn't give this five stars. I gave this four stars. Now here's the thing. This, um, this was a great book. This was a wonderful book. This was like such a good book thriller murder mystery i loved how isolated it was the beginning was incredible like the it's a diary entries from this guy who's there it's about the end of the world like the rest of the world has kind of ended in nuclear war you are in one of the only places that has survived and you're stuck in this hotel with all these people and so that element was really interesting like the isolation at the end of the world i found super interesting um the murder mystery element was interesting but <laughs> this had one of the weirdest endings I've ever read in a book like the last third of this just kind of went in this very very unexpected direction and it was so weird it's getting weird and I have to admire it a bit for going there and for like being like what the fuck was that like I have to admire it a little bit but at the same time it prevented it from being a five star like it was kind of fun because it kind of just went off the rails and like I finished the end and I was like what the fuck just happened like I've never been in more in shock when finishing a book I, re I would really recommend it though I think it's a very underrated like thriller murder mystery isolate like super isolated book and the characters in it are really interesting and in how they all interact like I just find I found that premise very interesting so I would recommend it but just be prepared that the ending will probably be disappointing and like you'll be shocked and you'll be like what just happened but I would recommend it and so it's not a complete dud like if we were villains but it wasn't five stars. It's Heartstopper Volume 2. This is Volume 1 by Alice okay. Roseman. Yeah. Heartstopper. Heartstopper will always be five stars. I don't even need to read. There's going to be two more. I don't even need to read them to know they're five stars. I could literally rate them five stars right now. And there's not any other author or book or series I can say that for. Heartstopper is this graphic novel series where these two boys called Nick and Charlie fall in love. And it's just super soft and sweet and cozy and like happy. Um, but it also is starting to deal with some important issues as well, like eating disorders and stuff like that. Yeah, it's just about them like coming to terms with their sexuality and falling in love with each other. It's just so gorgeous. Heartstopper will always be five stars. Like there's no question about it. Like not just the ones I've read, the ones in the future. I will never rate them less than five stars because it's just the whole experience of them. They only take like half an hour to read, but they are just so full of life and fun and joy and happiness. They just make me me so happy so yeah it will always be five stars i'm so sad there's only gonna be two more like that makes me so deeply sad but i understand it can't go on forever but it's just such an amazing graphic novel series so that was all of my five star predictions and i think i did pretty good like it was mostly five stars and 4.5 stars in fact, it was all four to five stars apart from If We Were Villains, which was a two star. So that is the big disappointment. I prefer not to think about that book. We pretend we do not see it. But everything else was between like a four, 4.5, five. A lot of fives in there. So I'm so happy. Like, I think that was such a good predictions video. I need to do it again. I'm going to do like a renewed one. And I don't know what books to pick. I'm feeling very scared about this. So yeah, I feel like I know my reading taste pretty well. And I know pretty well what is going to be a five star usually. So let me know down below what you thought of any of the books I mentioned in this video. If you've gotten to the end, comment any stars emojis. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you very soon in another video. Bye.